Welcome to The Filmesteins, the podcast where we discuss all things movies. Join us as we dive deep into the latest releases, revisit classic films, and explore the art of cinema. Whether you're a film fanatic or just love a good flick, we've got you covered. From Hollywood blockbusters to indie gems, we'll be breaking down the storytelling, cinematography, and everything in between. So grab some popcorn, sit back, and get ready for some cinematic magic. If you like what you hear, please consider subscribing to our Patreon at patreon.com slash filmesteins. We offer tiers at the $1, $5, and $20 level. For the $5 tier grants the ability to request films for future episodes. This is the Film Science, where movies are more than just entertainment, they're an experience. They're an experience all around you. And welcome back to another great episode of the Film Steins. We're at that 50 episode mark, I think. This might be episode 51. Really? Yep. I don't want to number these because it might send a message of like chronology. Which there is in one sense because our name is the Filmesteins. We're going from Filmesteins to Filmesteins. So we're becoming more learned in the world of film, right? Yep. But I um they're they're kinda evergreen episodes too though, right? You can listen to them at any point in time and they're still kinda relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. It'd still be nice to know. I guess an episode number. Maybe you can just name like every 50 or something. The celebratory kind of episodes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a good idea. I like that. Just kind of to celebrate how long we've been doing it. Yeah, I can get behind that. I'm joined today by my scaredy cat friend, Lucy. Hello, everybody. (laughs) Are you scared today? I'm always scared. Yeah. I'm especially scared today, though. (laughs) Or yesterday. When we watch the movie. It's true. You can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for great episodes of the Film of Steins. Brand new episodes, brand new movies, old movies, movies you never heard of. You've probably heard of all the movies we've done, actually. We don't do we don't haven't done too many niche movies with the exception of maybe third Saturday of October. That's probably the deepest cut of a movie we've covered. I think it depends on who you're asking. That's fair too. Because That's... I've had a family member say they didn't know half those movies. I was like, oh, really? Okay. Hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, I feel like more than half of the movies are very mainstream movies, but maybe I am mistaken. Yeah. I'm, I Honestly, I wouldn't have heard of half these movies if you weren't. Oh. But I'll, I'm also not looking for them. That's fair. That's fair. Well, we've done great episodes. We've covered great movies, including recently Dunkirk, Oppenheimer, Barbie... Evil Dead Rise. I don't know why it keeps popping up in my head. Every episode, I got I, I got to mention it. I thought you said we've covered great movies. Those are great movies. In some way. Maybe not. I would disagree with that. In some way. What, Barbie? At least. <laughs> let's, let's start there. Yeah, some of the worser movies. Teenage Kraken, Little Mermaid, Peter Pan, Transformers. I'll disagree there, too. <laughs> But today we have a special episode because this movie serves a special place in both of our lives and on some level. On in your way, it just scares the shit out of you, right? Yeah. It's. I feel like it's one of the movies. It's. It's. It's a movie that it's. It's top tier movie as far as scaring the shit out of you. Hell yeah. Yeah, but it's also directed by our boy James Wan, the creator of Saul. Yeah, dudes. In a lot of stuff, or not in a lot of stuff. He's been a part of a lot of stuff. Yeah. He's a big dog. Yeah, I was very surprised. Because I I know you said Saul when, you know, we were watching the film. And I'm like, okay, cool. Then I pulled up his wiki, and I'm like, oh my god. He's part of a lot of things. A lot of horror, you know. Yeah. And if not, the director definitely kind of responsible for helping future creators kind of move things forward acting as producer and stuff it's he's a busy guy no doubt yeah i mean he's he directed the conjuring i think the first two yep and then he was involved in you know annabelle the nun like a bunch of them oh megan too hmm malignant although malignant was is definitely one of his weaker outings i think did he direct annabelle the first annabelle or was he just a producer yeah just producer but we are mega fans of his early baby, Saul. You know, we that's obviously a roller coaster, pretty much a down roller coaster 
from the get go. You know, we get we have a high point of one, two, and three, and then you know it just kind of starts to not really know where to take it after that. But they're still fun, right? You set people up in these little rooms and tell them they have ten minutes to figure out the puzzle where their head's gonna explode. You know, that's fun. I mean, they're all fun, except maybe the. Uh... There's only one I don't. There's only two I guess I don't like. The Chris Rock one, of course. Trash. Mm -hmm. And then the one where they were in like that barn. I like that one. Oh, you like that one? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Which one do you not like? You beat me to it. It was a Chris Chris Rock one. I don't even want to include that, to Samuel, be honest. Samuel L. Jackson. Hello? What? All right. I mean, he, he gave the money, so okay, I guess. I guess in a way we're kind of lucky to get another Saul after that. Right, we're got we're getting Saul ten, I guess Saul X this year, later this year. Yeah, I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm excited. I hope it's. Yeah, I hope it's, it's something. In my uh, most anticipated movies list, top ten. Well, we are covering today the 2010 classic film, classic horror film, Insidious, directed by James Wan, the man, the legend, the myth. It's probably my favorite. Insidious is probably my favorite possession film. It isn't. It's not a. It's not super typical in the possession sense because our possessed person or person that's kind of under attack for the most of the movie is in a coma. So he's not, you know, doing demonic, vulgar shit. You know how they do their thing or killing folks. And a lot of it happens through the process of trying to save him or get a plan together to save him, I guess, really, or figure out what's wrong with him and whatnot. But I like a lot about this movie. I know this is kind of a controversial movie in some ways because of the end, but we'll get to that. What did you think about this movie, my friend? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a great horror movie. The first time I watched it, it scared the shit out of me. The second time I watched it, it's still scared the shit out of me. Did I get more scared? Probably. I probably did. Not gonna lie. Screamed out a few times. Especially when I was really paying attention and I was like all into it. Some some parts got me. And it's I don't know, it's 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 a great film. It's hard to say what's wrong with it because it's got jump scares from the beginning to end. It's got something to give you well, whether it's a jump scare or just a creepy face or just a creepy sound of, you know, piano keys just slamming, whatever. It's got something creepy to give you from the beginning to the end, whether, you know, it's a shadow or it's just something, which is nice. It's nice when horror movies do that. And I know some don't just to kind of make you anticipate, I guess the jump scare or whatever but i think this one does a great job of it yeah as far as jump scares go i think this movie is among the kings kings and queens to kind of really show you how that can be done or how to do that effectively over and over and over again it's kind of it's kind of really amazing how many ways they manage to pull that out of you through different ways through like slowly moving the camera over and like you know the edits in between them the camera moving to the left like when they're talking i think at the dinner table and you see the hand like you see the guy in the corner with his hand raising and stuff and then that's like building the spookiness and you're seeing it and then all of a sudden that's when you see the red face guy yeah you know it's just like yeah damn it's, it's good stuff that's good stuff or even like when the mom is in they move into the new house and she puts on a record and she's walking through past the windows. You know, it's maybe kind of cheesy and you've seen it done before, but it's just the different ways they do go about kind of setting up the, the scare. It's just the variety. I guess the variety of the setups is really kind of interesting to me. I like it a lot and it's just, it just, it feels really effective. It's kind of like Saul especially the later Saul's where you have the variety of killing people pretty much all the exact same way. <laughs> you know, it's like they all end in death, I guess, or they all get mutilated crazily, but they, the ways it happens, the, the, the variety is like really cool. 
Yeah. But I guess to start off in the very beginning, because I don't want to forget the when they are in the first house, the first like the opening bits when they're in the kitchen, the editing is so quick. The cuts that are happening, and I imagine it happens. It's it happened because the room is small, and maybe when they were filming in a real house, I'm not too sure. But it was it was like super bad. It reminded me, of course, of a Bohemian Rhapsody, the worst edited movie of all time. But the cuts were just like Coco Melon kind of style, were half a second long. What are you talking about? Like in the introduction, where they're giving us like the director names and stuff. No, no, when they're in the kitchen and getting ready for school, and he's about to, Josh oh, is about to leave. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, and the kid's pouring, like, cereal in the mug, and... Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. The cuts okay, there you. are crazy. Yeah. And that... Because I was thinking about the conjuring, the first conjuring. I mm-hmm. um Yeah, the first conjuring, where the first... The opening... I don't know if it's the opening shot, but it's, like, the introduction shot to the cast of characters. It moves through the house. I think seamlessly. I don't think there's any cuts. It goes from every room downstairs, back and forth, and showing all and sweeping around through the characters and stuff. And it's really cool, especially for that movie. You know, especially for like kind of a cheap horror film, right? But here we have the complete opposite. There are probably thirty cuts in three minutes. Yeah, I didn't really notice that. Like that, I guess I just felt the frustration the mom was feeling. That's there may be something to that because you know the dad's taking his sweet ass time getting ready to go to work, but she's got a kid over here needing a bowl, but she gives him a mug. She's on the phone. She's trying to kids crying. Yeah, kid, the baby's crying. The other kids like, you know, I'm scared or whatever he said. I don't know. Like, I think there was just a lot going on, and I didn't, I didn't really notice the editing, but I just noticed how I felt. With you the know, anxiety there. You know, that might be really genius of you to say, really, because we're, we're also in a tight kitchen. Yes. Tight editing, or not, not tight as in, like, not super sophisticated, but at least really quick cuts and stuff. And then the the dad, who's really just not super present, ready to go to work, you know, not worrying about home life. And, yeah, and the kids are crying. Kids pouring cereal on the floor. Yeah, kids yeah. are begging for shit. She's trying to, she's on the phone. Yeah. She's like, do you have time to drop them off at work? He's like, yeah. nope. He's like, well, the fuck why not man yeah help this lady out i mean i i mean i take it back you're right you're right i just i i guess i was feeling i was feeling that and i connected it to the wrong place you're right it's not a bohemian rhapsody problem bohemian rhapsody man we'll have to watch that just so you can see how bad it is it's a great great it's a great study of how to not make a film (laughs) because they're you know how you know how remember in 12 angry men you can just imagine how in 12 Angry Men, at least, where when you're filming, especially like eye-level shots, you have to get the eye, the the line of sights like on point, right? They need to be looking at the right characters and stuff. Yeah. There's something that kind of happens like that. There's, sev- there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things wrong with Bohemian Rhapsody, but there's a scene where there's a bunch of characters and they're discussing something and there's a bunch of cuts happening in between them talking and stuff. And then there's there's cuts happening without anyone even saying anything they'll cut to you and you're not saying anything and no one's saying anything like there's no reaction cut or anything you're not they're not capturing any reaction out of you from someone saying something that's shocking or provocative right it's just cuts happening for no fucking reason there's no intention behind them at all it's crazy and they happen like crazy with coco melon style it must have been made by fucking coco melon people i don't even know yeah, maybe and so when i see that it gives me anxiety just by nature of that that's just fucking craziness. <laughs> Why I don't know who would want to edit like that though. Like what kind of messages are you getting across? But you're right. You would get a you you can match a character's feeling with with that exactly. I think I, I feel now that now that you say that I feel like I've actually seen that somewhere else. I can't think I can't remember what it was, but but you're right. Genius. Genius insight. Thank, Thank you, you for that. You're welcome. I like this movie even more. <gasps> Whoa. This is yeah, a great. This is a great movie. Though. It is a great movie. It, I mean, I saw this dude, the red dude, whatever his name is, lipstick guy. What's his name? Lipstick demon. Lipstick so stupid. Demon. So stupid. That's what it says on the billing, though. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I saw him for days walking in my car after work, making sure he wasn't in the back. I didn't want to look in my rear view mirror, even though there were no rear view mirror scenes. 
I just knew he'd be there. That face just yep burned itself into your back of your eyelids. Yep. After we watched it, I had to go to the bathroom and made you walk with me. <laughs> I mean, I was terrified. Yes, yes. That <laughs> that was so that that became such a meme when this movie came out. Do you remember that? No. You didn't see that. I don't think so. It was it was a pretty big deal on the internet. I guess you you know you got to fall within the right algorithm, I guess. But if he popped up in your algorithm, he was your algorithm. That was just oh a, my gosh, he was, he was big. Yeah, the first time I watched this, the scene where they were in the kitchen and the dad moves and all of a sudden he's behind the dad. That's the one that scared me the most. But my second time watching this movie, for some reason, the really creepy dude. He's not not the red dude, just another creepy dude hanging around the house. Towards the beginning. Uh yeah, towards the beginning where the baby was crying and the mom goes in there and that dude's like behind the canopy thing of the baby crib. Whatever that thing is called. Oh my god, I screamed. I think I scared everybody with my scream more than that guy scared <laughs> everybody watching it. He uh it was so creepy. It, I don't know. I wasn't expecting him there. <laughs> I was expecting him to pop up somewhere else in a, in a second, not immediately be there. And just something so vulnerable about a baby and a creepy man. Oh my god, it's good stuff. Good stuff. On the second floor, looking On through the, the window. Oh yeah. my god, I didn't even think about that. That would have given me more anxiety. Yeah, that's what I always think about in that oh early gosh. part of that movie. Because we have we see that same guy pop up later with the mom, where he's like walking out the window and she's like, "What the fuck is that?" And then it, it like kind of freezes for a second there, and then he walks past the window, but he's on the inside of the house now, and you know. I think I screamed a little there too. Yeah, I think you did too. <laughs> <laughs> and he's that same guy that tries to lick her, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's Towards after her. He's after her. Yeah, yeah, he's after her. That creep. I like how the demons kind of pick someone i like that <laughs> I that's really like fun that. <laughs> if you want them to torture someone else they're not going to they're just after you yeah that's funny stuff yeah no, i know i fucking love that i'm gonna tell you my two favorite things about this film is the color grading how gray it is it's got a almost raw kind of tungsten feel to it and then the mom's look uh, Rose Byrne, is that her name? Yeah, Renee, I don't know. Renee. Her, like, sad thing, she's got, she's just got going on with her eyebrows or something like that. She just looks fucking sad, and it just, I just love that combo so much. I don't know what that is. I don't, I don't know what that is. I just, I love that, that, it's just so, it just, I don't know, it works so well. And then Patrick, wilson's uh patrick wilson's josh character i feel like he kind of overacts i don't do you get this feeling is he an overactor i feel like he does a lot with his face when it's not necessary maybe a theater actor type thing hmm. and i especially felt that when they were in bed i can't remember what at what point they were in bed but they were talking and he was he was just doing stuff with his face i was like why is he doing this but i just loved i just loved it i just i don't know there's something about that I liked a lot. But but I did like how uh, Renee's look and the grayness of the of the, the of the house and and the other house, the two houses was I just really thought that was super cool. Yeah. There's always something good when you have the right like the I don't want to say the right cast, but like the right person for that role cuz she does have a very like tired sad look and then you know her son's getting possessed i guess not really not yet i don't know so it's 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 very fitting here maybe she wouldn't be fitting in a non-sad role you know she can't be barbie but yeah she, she could be sad barbie yeah she could be sad barbie <laughs> uh, my kid got possessed barbie <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I didn't really pay attention about Josh. What's his name? Josh Lambert or Patrick Wilson? That's... I don't know. I didn't get that feeling. Because I, f I get that feeling, I think, also in Conjuring. There's just something about him that's just a little too... He's given me a little too much animation. Like, it's not a, it's not a voice thing. It's not a 
it's not a performance thing in its entirety, but there's just something in his... It's kind of like, you know how Jack Black will move his eyebrows and shit yeah. too much and stuff? But it's, like, really charming and cool when he does it, you know, because he's great. There's something happening here in a similar way that I'm just like, what is going on? I don't hate it, but what is going on with this character? <laughs> what are you doing, And dude? I feel like he does that in Conjuring, too, but I'm not... Okay. I can't. I'm not... I'm not... I just don't know what that is. I don't... It's fun, though. It's, I'm, I'm sold. I'm sold. Yeah, what about the kids? Yeah, the kids are hilarious. Uh, not as in a ha ha way, but just the whole everything to do with the kids. That's so it's funny how I think in the first house still we are reminded basically that there's a brother because he gives the mom Renee a progress report award thing. Yeah, an award. Yeah, and, and it's she just, finds it's, it really. She finds it on the table. It's all crumpled yeah. up or something, like, right? And she's, you know, like, what is this? You know, and he's like, oh, it's just an award. And she's like, well, why didn't you show it to me? And it's just like, <laughs> it's just, it's a great representation of how the movie is treating the kids. That they're just forgotten. Yeah. It's like, what is even, it's not even, it's pointless. I'm not even the main character here, so I'm not going to show you my stuff. I love how kind of self-aware that is. I feel like that's totally intentional. And then. After that, I think I think that might be the last time we see yeah. either of the two the two little or kids at it's the new house. Funny. I don't think we see them at all. You're like, where's the baby? Yes, why is it not crying? And I get contextually, the movie happens really quick. It happens in just a few hours, I think, or we have like a few hours of like there's part of the movie happens in one part of a day for a couple hours and the last part of the movie happens in like the next day and over the course of a couple hours mm -hmm. so like if you think about it like in that sense you could imagine maybe the older kid is at school and then the baby is just asleep for a couple hours kind of thing you know what i mean yeah something like that so like i, I can kind of see it making sense in some way but it, I, I do think it's fucking hilarious that yeah. they're just completely absent and the self-awareness sells it for me because it, it makes it funny yeah yeah it's just it's just funny because that's you know some some of those scary bits are scary because of the other two kids but you know i guess they're not important in this last act you know we're we're done trying to scare you we're now we're we need to get to the bottom of it so okay i get it but you know the kid um uh, what's his name is it foster <laughs> is that the little brother's name yeah i didn't even know that. yeah he has a name uh, you know, he's telling his mom that it really scares him when Dalton's walking around at night and you're like, what? And then the next scene, it's him, like him and Dalton, their rooms are across from each other and he's just scared of him. And you're, you're like, oh shit, he's going to get up. What's going to happen? He just, you know, shuts his door and gets scared, whatever. So, and then, you know, we talked about the one with the baby and there's, you know, more with the baby and the baby monitor going off and all that stuff. So they're really scary here with these kids. And then we completely, completely ignore them. And they're terrified too, but, you know, whatever. Go do your <laughs> own thing, kid. Or were you trying to save your brother? Mm. It's funny. It's so funny. And it would have, it's, it feels so intentional because all it would have taken was one tiny scene with both of them in it yeah towards you know the third act or whatever that's all it would have taken to remind us oh you know these kids are in danger or whatever too you know they're part of this scenario too that's why it feels so intentional that we're just like not nah, these kids are <laughs> it's kids or whatever maybe they maybe they went with the grandma that's true the grandma kind of falls into the background a little yeah. bit too after she introduces elise and that's that's pretty much the end of her i think isn't it Yes, I know she helps them like unpack in the new house and then she comes back and tells them about her nightmare and how she reached out and asked him what he wanted and he pointed the red demon dude pointed at Dalton and then that was pretty much it until Elise was back in the picture. So maybe they're like, here, go stay with grandma. We got some shit to do. <laughs> that could have been covered in a little scene. Yeah. A little one, one minute sentence. Scene. Yeah. Could it, we could have not even seen it. Yeah. It could have just been like, we should call, you know, we should call, I should call mom to check on the kids. Yeah. Boom. That's it. <laughs> Done. Covered. It's like, oh shit. Through with grandma. That's funny shit. 
what did you think about the whole Elise thing and her bringing her two little minions with her and they're kind of the comic relief in this movie? I like that. I thought it was cool. It was kind of different than when you where you think this is going. You know, you think they're getting possessed or whatever, but it's no, it's more more than that. They're uh what are they called? Astro projecting traveling. projecting astro projecting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're like, whoa, okay, some I'm getting some explanation here. I'm getting some kind of history here. And then you find out that Josh is kind of brought it up on himself, kind of. You know, because he didn't ask for it, but you know, I guess later on we find out a little bit more, but you you find out that this family is in danger and this kid is in danger and Josh is in danger. He's sort of been in danger his whole life. Yeah. Which is really cool. I know they take that a little far in the second film. They kind of they run with that thread, but I like that there's like history here. Yeah, I wouldn't know about that. Yeah, we'll we'll cover the second one too, <laughs> just for you. But um, then we get these two Ghostbusters looking dudes. <laughs> Ghostbuster looking dudes with all their tech stuff. It's cool. It's cool, yeah. And then it works. And they see shit, and they're like, "Oh fuck!" And they're kind of scaredy cats, and- <laughs> which is awesome. That's that. That's their comic relief. That's how you fucking do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. it depends on the movie, but that we'll talk about movie later in the next episode where you know we it, they're just you know she pulls out these quick little whatever you call them little one liners and stuff. It's just like that's not funny. Yeah. But here, you know, we got Ghostbusters getting scared. <laughs> good it's good it's all good and one thing i didn't get though was the picture thing how when he was younger and he would have a picture of himself taken i guess and that uh lady is approaching him in each picture so what about all the pictures when he's an adult because we see his wedding picture yeah and his mom makes a comment on that and then the family photo yeah there's a wedding photo and a family yeah, photo? Yeah, when she, in, in the beginning, when she's looking through the album, and Dalton's like, oh, show me daddy when he was younger or whatever. She's like, you know, we don't really have photos. And then she's like, you know, kind of uh, scrolling through it. Or not scrolling. She's <laughs> flipping through it. She's scrolling. <laughs> and we see her and him when they're younger, when they got married. And then towards the end, we see the family photo. Of her, Dalton, Foster, and the dad. And then that's when the mom makes a comment. Like, oh, I can't believe you got him to sit still enough. It's like, well, where's the where's the lady there? Yeah, I think there's kind of a layered thing happening here. Is that the only reason the, la- the lady was there is because she was getting closer and closer to him. Because he was astral projecting further and further and being a little more careless. And so she was creeping up on him kind of thing. And then when they trained him to stop astral projecting, they brainwashed him the other, you know the other way. Yeah, that closed the door, and so she's no longer a problem. Mm. But they did that at the cost of him being afraid or just hating getting his picture taken. Oh, okay, I okay. think that's what's happening there. That's that at least how sense. I took it, and that's I like it. That would make sense. Yeah, yeah. It helps build texture to this character who's yeah. not you know doesn't need this, but it does. I mean, but in a way, maybe he does because it helps elevate the movie. Yeah, no. That, that makes sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Because I'm like, what, what, did she stop pursuing him? What happened here? <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I like all the gadgets they bring in. And they, they do little kind of montage, small little montage mm-hmm. type things, putting them together and setting them up and the, the noises and stuff. It's really, really cool. And what, what do you think about Elise? She's kind of a, a star. They ran with her and... They ran with them in the three and four, I should say. I don't think I've seen four, but I mean, she she was cool. She's cool. She she portrayed what she needed to portray. You know, she did she did her role justice. She looked smart. She sounded smart. She was an old wise lady that died. You know, unfortunately, very quickly. I don't think I don't think there was an, a casting issue there. I think she did a great job. I did like when she said about, you know, that this lipstick demon had an insidious agenda 
She said the thing. Yeah, she said the thing. It's always <laughs> so funny when they say the thing. I like that. Yeah, I do too. I do too. I I liked her, but I also didn't like what she brought to the movie because she brought a real, like, tangible kind of rational thing to it. She it, things got explained a little too much, I think. Especially, I know that's what a problem a problem a lot of people have with the third act when he goes into the other realm. Mm-hmm. And it just starts to it it brings too much physicality to it. I think, I think a lot. I think a lot of people do feel that. I don't know if they know why that they hate it or not, but I I think I don't like it because it brings too much reason to the whole thing. I wish it was just a little more ethereal and harder to grasp, and a little more experiential. But he's fucking walking. <laughs> he walks from his old, his his new house to the old house and everything. What do you think? What do you think about that last act? It's it's definitely the uh, the controversial point in this movie. Yeah, well, you know, I'm your scaredy cat friend, so I always love when things are explained, so I know it's not going to happen to me. Uh, oh, I don't, you know, travel outside my body at night. Cool, this is not going to happen to me. You know, in Saul, I don't do bad shit. I go out of my way to not do bad shit. So I'm never going to get trapped and have to make these decisions these people are making. Okay, And okay. it helps me enjoy the movie so much better. Okay. Or I'd just be scared and probably not watch the next one because fuck that. Yeah. But that's, that's probably just me. It's probably just me and like five other people who get a kick out of that. Okay. Okay. I, I hear that. I do kind of like that they... See, it's kind of a a funny, contradictory thing because I do kind of like the actual projection pole or train of thought because that's a very like real thing people believe in. Do you know anyone who thinks they can actual project? Mm -mm. I've known a few people, of course, in my life, and it's it's a weird thing for them to talk about. It's you know, it's it's basically what you saw here minus the demons. Were they on drugs? Uh, no, I don't think so. That you know of. That I know of. <laughs> but yeah, it's I uh I I like it for the most part. I don't like how if you it's just like if you believe you're stronger than them, you know, just have faith in yourself, you know. I don't and especially in that one bit where he pushed he pushed the guy that was coming after his wife. Hey, he right deserves to get Dale. pushed. Yeah, but he was just like, you know, had like this moment of divine power against the demon. It's just like, ugh, I wish that it just could have not happened that way. You know, I just I don't like I don't like the physicality of of it all of that last section. I because a part of me likes it a lot. You know, like the little when down when he's downstairs and the families get shot by the That's older cool. daughter or something. I like that. It, it's cool and everything, but I wish. I wish it would just would have stayed weird, but it got too physical. It literally got physical, I guess, with him pushing, but him going through the door, and then seeing up there, and the guy looks at him, and he has to take break the chain off and stuff. It's just a little too. It's a it's a it's not whimsical enough, you know, for me. It's not ethereal enough. It has it's just too rooted in Newtonian mechanics or something. I don't know. I don't. It just I'm not sold on it but i am at the same time you know i am because i i I think this last time we watched it it's probably my favorite watch you know yeah so i mean i'm 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 definitely high on it but it it just it the last bit reminds me of uh poltergeist the poltergeist film which is not very good we watched half half of it maybe i i I didn't force you to watch the whole thing i don't think i think we finished it oh we did yes okay and it's just it becomes I don't know, it's like something too family friendly about the whole explanation of it, I guess. I don't know. I'm all for family friendly explanation of horror movies that are gonna give me nightmares. Hey man. All for it. You explain it away, please. To my mind that's not gonna stay up thinking these things. Maybe that's the intent. Maybe he's trying to <laughs> he's trying he's I trying to give it. you the problem, and then he's also giving you the solution. In case you, know? you want it. <laughs> yeah. James Wan, man. He's a he's a genius. How'd you feel about all the jigsaw... Oh, those are cute. References or yeah. cameo type thing. Yeah, yeah, Easter yeah. eggs. Easter eggs. But then also kind of 
inspiration, I guess. Yeah, certainly. Especially, I guess, the, the one on the chalkboard. That was mm-hmm. cute. That's that was that's cute. super cute. I wish more movies did that kind of thing. Uh, I like that James Wan's name was on the board, too. That was cute, too. Yeah. And his had times two next to it. So he was like... Because those were like people who were in trouble or something or people who had detention. Oh, my something. God. And I think his had like that's hilarious. times two that's next cute. to it. That's cute. No, mega cute. And some of the editing, for sure, was very reminiscent of, of Saul. Mm-hmm. And that was very cool. That was yeah. very cool. I, I like... Because that kind of shit also reminds me of court of a of course of House of a Thousand Corpses. You know, it's a very early two thousands thing, yeah. kind of going on here. But it's very cool. It's very cool when you can do it in small little doses, right? Unless you're just gonna embrace some of it or and have your own style or a spin on it, like House of a Thousand Corpses or Saul. You know, but Saul kind of helped initiate some of the campier versions of it. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really saw it in... Saw? God damn. <laughs> I really saw it... <gasps> she said the thing. <laughs> um, shit, not even... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, I really uh, saw it when... At the end, when the dad is rescuing Dalton and he's up there and playing his little music, the demon dude's up there playing his little music with all his little masks and like, enjoying his life i don't know what he's doing but it's it's cool the knickknacks and stuff are cool yeah all those knickknacks and then just i guess him himself and his coloring and his face and then dalton's chained up you know like all everybody in soul in the soul movies so it's like right there i'm like oh shit okay i see it here for sure yeah so it's cool i enjoyed that yeah, speaking of that, speaking of the red step, red lipstick demon, I one thing I really like about this movie is we never focus on him too much. The the clearest, I think there's one instance at the very end where he's like he starts he like yells at Dalton or yells at y- Dalton and Josh when they're about to run away. Yeah, and I wish I if I could take anything away from this movie, I would obscure him a little bit more like we have throughout the entire movie. Because I think it's like, especially when we're in that little, it's not really a montage, but that little kind of quick texture building moment of his little hideaway that he's got at his yeah, little yeah, workshop. Yeah. <laughs> workshop. <laughs> it's yeah, like a toy workshop or something. He's filing his nails. It's weird. It's weird. It's yes. weird. It's very cool. And then like we see him, we see like a profile of him. We see his hands. We see his, his face through a magnifying glass. It's. I love that we, every, almost every shot of him is obscure. I love that. But it's because he's so... Because if you look at him too long, he's kind of stupid looking. Oh, heck no. Oh, no? Heck okay, no. just me. Okay. Just you. <laughs> okay, okay. Not me. Well, they do that for me then. They, they're saving me. I guess from... I can't look at him too long either because... You got to look away. I got to look away <laughs> or cover my eyes. That's funny. Well, I got to tell you. The red lipstick demon was played by the guy who did the music for this movie. Oh, really? Isn't that kind of cool? That is kind of cool. Yeah. Oh. Joseph Bashara. That's cool. That's I like sick. That. I love I like that. that. Yeah. Especially because it's kind of it's kind of nice bit of a good bit of irony and serendipity and you know kind of just funness and because the most iconic bit of this movie is. Is the red lipstick demon, I think. But also the song, the Tiny Tim song. Yep. And I guess that would have been his doing because he scored the movie. And so it's just kind of cool that he mashed those up like that. Because, I mean, it's I mean, that's it's crazy stuff. That's that's I love that. And then the, if you know any history about that song, you know that Tiny Tim died performing it. So it's even creepier. Yeah, I think you told me that. Um, I was like, I, do, I didn't want to know that. I know. It, but it brings a new creepiness to it, for yep. sure. I think he had a heart attack oh, while performing it. Rest in peace, Tiny Tim. Rest in peace. Or not. Rest however you want. Yeah, I mean, it's up to you. You want to be haunted? Get rest, haunted. Rest how you be want haunted. to. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fine. I bet Tiny Tim was cool. With that song? Yeah. Heck yeah, he was. And then he also did our <laughs> favorite. Cool. He did our favorite spongebob song uh yeah is that from the pilot the spongebob pilot with the i think so i think so one of the great pilots of all time yep 
Pilots are not very good normally. I don't think it's a great pilot. Yeah, this film is great. I love this film. And I have since it came out. I have. You saw it? Did I saw it in theaters. In theaters? I saw oh, this film Oh, God, in no. Yeah. Ooh, I'm getting sure... goosebumps. <laughs> you telling me that. I sure did. I think I saw By the first yourself? two in theaters. Oh, no. I I think I went with uh my mom and, and my good friend at the time. Okay. Yeah, when I was, I guess back then, what, 13 years ago? I was really fascinated by the workshop. I thought that was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen in a movie at that point. I remember being really into that. Because at that point, I wasn't real into movies quite yet. I liked horror movies. That was basically it. I was I've always been kind of a horror fan. And I guess in 2000, by 2010, my favorite film was probably House of a Thousand Corpses, so which is still one of my favorites. But so I bet I hadn't developed a love for film like I have today. Like other than that, I probably was really into animation, and so it's kind of bare bones for me. But yeah, well, I didn't start watching scary movies until three years ago. Before that, scariest movie I'd seen was probably The Village. In my Shyamalan's The Village. Yep. Maybe Mickey Mouse Horror House, whatever. Oh my shit's god. Called. Oh my god. I was not about to watch scary movies. Heck no. Well, I'm glad that I can force you to experience those today. So if you guys subscribe. Go subscribe at patreon.com slash filmasteins and you can make Lucy here watch any spooky movie out there. For the f- at the five dollar level, go request it. You want to make her watch? Yeah. What uh, what can get spookier than this? Um. I mean, I think I've told you that you've basically seen all the spooky movies. Like, Just don't I, make me rewatch other spooky movies. Sinister. That's did that spook you out? Mm, no. Look, I'm telling you, it's mainly creepy faces and cre- creepy things. Just. You know, paranormal stuff? Okay, I can deal with that. Like, the Paranormal Activity movies? I'm, really, I've only seen the first one, but... Yeah, second one's much better. Yeah, they're, they're okay. You know, shit moving around? Ooh, okay. But you got you got a mask? You, you got face paint on? You crawling on your back? Oh, heck no. <laughs> Have you seen the two little girls in... The new Exorcist movie. Have you seen any screenshots or anything? Nope. I haven't seen the trailer, but they look pretty good. They look Ooh. good. They look creepy. No. I can't wait to see the new Exorcist movie. Oof. Like, even... What's his name? The guy from the movie, you know... The Shining. The main dude. And he says, here's Johnny, or where's Johnny, whatever he says. Here's Johnny, yeah. Yeah, here's Johnny. Even when he makes that creepy ass face while he's he's got a, that's he's, creepy yeah that's, he's got that a good low face key too. gives me the creeps Ooh. i kind of gotta look away a little bit Ooh. doesn't terrify me you know i'm not gonna see that on my way to the bathroom like gives i am chills, gonna though. be but it gives me some chills nice it's a great movie shiny jack i think his name is yeah jack i don't know where why he says here's johnny is that from something else is he referencing something? Something I know people are referencing The Shining for sure when they say that. But is is his name Jack in it? Yeah. Yeah. His name's Jack Nicholson. I know. Wait, is it? I'm all fucked up. <laughs> it says a reference to the intro of the Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. Oh, so he is referencing something. So when people reference that, they're referencing The Shining, referencing John John Carson. That's hilarious. That's that's meta. That's fun. His name's Jack in it, right? Yeah. Okay. I think. Because <laughs> I can hear the mom saying Jack. I can too. But see, everything I'm seeing is Jack Nicholson, so. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, man. Well, you have any final thoughts for me on Insidious, 2010's Great Insidious? Nope. Go watch it. Watch it with a friend. Watch it in the daylight. Watch it by yourself at nighttime in the dark. Nope. Windows open Don't do where that. you can hear the breeze. Do not dare do that. I would probably 
I would give myself a heart attack. You'd come in and I'd be dead. And I'd be like, what happened? Oh, shit, the windows are open. Someone <laughs> killed me. <laughs> and you just fucking died on your own accord. I scared myself to death. <laughs> That'd be a way to go. Oh, no. Like a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, go watch it. For real, go watch it. Spook yourself a little. But, you know, probably with a friend. Watch it with a friend. Yeah. It's, yeah. Who can walk a, a you friend to who your can, car. What do you say? Who can walk you to your car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a friend who doesn't talk too much during the movie. Yeah. You know, you gotta, also don't true. invite the friend who talks too much. Because a horror movie where someone talks too much is just not not a good, very good experience. Yeah, you don't hear them. You don't hear the movie. You're just anxious. No. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, thank you for watching this film with me. And thank you guys for listening to this episode. Join us over on Patreon soon for exclusive episodes including our ranking of Tim Burton's films and and M. Night Shyamalan films. And maybe David Lynch and Jordan Peele friends, or films too, friends. (laughs) Films too. Those are going to be behind the $1 paywall if you guys want to listen in on that. But until next time, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And that's a wrap for today's episode of The Film of Steins. Thanks for tuning in and joining us on our cinematic journey. We hope you enjoyed our discussion and gained some new insights and perspectives on the world of movies. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform, especially Patreon at patreon.com slash And follow us on social media for more film-related content. We love hearing from our listeners, so if you have any feedback, suggestions, movie recommendations, or book recommendations, please feel free to reach out to us. Until next time, keep watching and keep loving the magic of movies. This is The Film of Steins, signing off. <laughs>